getting positions, everyone. Camera one into a fast second period. Camera one, track left. Open up. Watch your focus, Kids are on the air. Kids wanna know. Hi, I'm Chris Eddy, and this is Kids Want to Know, the show that answers questions kids want to know more about. Now, how would you like to know more about finding gold? Well, I recently got a chance to visit with a group of school kids on a special project because kids want to know, what was it like to be a 49er? No, not those 49ers. These 49ers from the Old West. To find our answer, we need to play detective. Now, a lot of you know the 49ers were the men and women who came to California in search of what? Gold! That's right, gold. But who found it first? Well, my investigation brought me two names that may sound familiar to you, John Sutter and James Marshall. To find out more, I talked with state park aide Susie Mulligan. Years and years and years ago, in the early and mid-1840s, Mr. Sutter, who was down in Sacramento and had built himself a fort, decided he needed to increase the size of the fort and build a grist mill. To do that, he needed lumber. Uh, down in Sacramento, they don't have a lot of trees at that, they didn't have them at that time, and the river's a fairly slow-moving river, so they needed to go out and find a place to build a sawmill where there was a rushing river and a good supply of trees to be cut down. And he decided he needed to do this, but he also needed to find someone who could build it for him because he didn't have the knowledge to do that. And that's when James Marshall came into the picture. And they became partners. And Mr. Marshall came up here and found this site and went back and they agreed to build the mill and he started work in the summer of 1847. Now in the process of building this sawmill, a carpenter looking in a hole that was dug for the water wheel found... Who are those people? Anyway, they're right, and that happened January 24th, 1848. 1848? Then why aren't they called the 48ers? Well, you see, nowadays, we have the telephone and TV sets. But back then, it took a long time for news to travel from the West Coast to the East Coast. And once they found out there was gold in California, it took an even longer time to get out here, because there were no airplanes. So by the time they arrived, it was 1849. And that's how we get the 49ers. To make this more than a history lesson, I got a chance to meet some school kids who found out what it was like to be a 49er. They had a lot of problems to solve, like what were they going to eat? So they were told they had to make cornbread with an old Dutch oven. First we have the children grind the corn. Uh, we need three cups of the corn ground, so they do that. And then we have uh, our dry ingredients, and that's the flour and the baking powder and sugar. And they need that, and then we add some eggs and some milk, stir all that up, add the corn, and then once we have that, we grease our Dutch oven. Then we put that in the Dutch oven and carefully carry the Dutch oven up to the charcoal briquettes. Okay, and we have about 30 briquettes, and we put 10 of them on the bottom, and then we put 20 on top. And the reason you do that is so the cornbread cooks all the way through, so the heat comes from the top and the, and the bottom. So it cooks it all the way through. It takes about 30 minutes for the cornbread to cook, and then the kids get to eat that. And we serve it with honey, and it's real good. And so part of the, uh, what they're learning is how to cooperate, and they have to do everything. They clean the dishes at the end, so we did some cleanup. That's probably the most favorite part of the whole they, thing. They love that. <laughs> yeah, I bet they did. Yeah. Now, some of the other problems settlers had, besides finding water and finding food, was making shelter. Now, what this is, is this is called a lean-to, and it's made from poles and rocks. The rocks brace the poles, and they put a waterproof tarp over the top. Now, this protects you from water, rain, sleet, snow, whatever, like low-flying birds. Something else they had to worry about, or so they thought, were Indians. But the fact is that most of them were very friendly and even willing to share some of their knowledge of the land. Here our modern day 49ers learn more about Native Americans, from the furs and pelts that they use to keep warm to the bones and horns of animals that they use for tools. Now if Native Americans and settlers took more time to learn more about each other, maybe they would have spent less time fighting. Maybe we could learn from that. Finally, we get to the part that most of the kids wanted to learn about. All right already, we'll show you how to find gold. There are three ways. 
hard rock mining is where they would go thousands of feet underground and look for gold in certain kinds of rocks. This is quartz, okay? You can find uh, gold in quartz. So they would go out to an area, with a shovel, okay, by the river usually. And if they found quartz, and they would take their knife and they would just poke away at the rock and dig, and they would try to find gold that way. Another type is hydraulic mining. Okay, hydraulic mining is using a big water cannon, which is called a monitor. Okay, and you dam up a stream or a reservoir, okay, and then the water flows down the hill into a monitor, which is like a water cannon, and it sprays a hillside. And it just knocks everything on the hillside down, rocks, trees, bushes, everything. Okay, then all that debris would collect in giant sluice boxes, much bigger than this, big sluice boxes. And then there'd be a bunch of miners like us, and we'd be sent here and we'd sift through and try to find the gold. But what happened with hydraulic mining is it was very bad because it washed everything down, all the debris went into the rivers. And then the rivers flooded, flooded all the crops in the valley. Which brings us to placer mining. This is a sluice box. Okay, this was for gold panning. And you would put all the, the rocks in here, okay? And then you'd have water, you'd put water through this. And this was where you would stand and you would sift through it, okay? And all the, the big rocks that didn't have gold, you'd throw those out. And the heavier rocks and where the gold will be will settle at the bottom. The one we're most familiar with is gold panning. We stayed clear of the river because it was so high and dangerous, but we did use the gold trough. What you're doing, the gold's real heavy, so the gold's gonna sink. Okay, you wanna do this and you wash in your pan. Okay, and you pick through the bigger rocks, put those back in. You tap your pan every so often and the gold will settle. So you're doing this motion. It'll take you about 10 minutes to work this pan all the way down. You can't just throw the stuff in because it might be gold. So now that we kind of know what it's like to be a 49er, it's time for me to try my hand at panning for gold. Is that gold in here? Right Let's take a look. Go. Let's take a look. I'm going to dig through a little bit and find some gold here. Are you guys going to be mad if I find gold? And you guys don't? Oh, yeah. Is that gold? Yeah, I think that's gold. Really okay. See that right gold. there? Does it look like gold? I think I found gold. No, that's copper. Are you sure? Party pooper. While the other gold miners were busy at one end, I snuck off to the other end to find that big gold nugget. Now, not everybody can find gold. You've got to have a keen eye and a good sense. And I'm just the person to do it. Let's see. No, nah, don't see any gold. Just a couple of rocks. <sighs> wow, we not only found out who the 49ers were, we found out how they got their name, how they lived, and most importantly, how fun it could be to learn it. And remember, if you'd like to know more, just go to your local library and look up... Don't even think about going away. Kids want to know we'll be right back.